Hello, hello, mudroomers. This is Carmen here. I'm coming in this week to talk about our um, one of our featured products, which is Designer Liner. This was actually my choice for this month because it is so awesome. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it because I feel like this is going to end up being kind of a long video because there's a lot of stuff to cover about this product since it is um, such a versatile product. Um, so to start out with, um, we'll just start with uh, what you'll get when you get your designer liner. So, um, well actually first we'll go over the uh, basics of it. So the designer liner, it can be fired from cone 06 up to cone 10. It's uh, performed similar to an underglaze in a sense that it is going to have a matte finish and it's going to be very stable um, when you put it on a piece. Um, it does come in uh, 10, 11 colors. So I have kind of one of our charts here. If you guys can see this, I'll just do it upside down. Sorry, it doesn't fit the other way. Um, so yeah, here are all of our designer liner colors. These are their results at cone six, and all of these have a clear glaze applied to them. So when you're firing to low fire, the only difference is that this uh, purple is going to be a little bit... Um, more purple I guess would be a good way to put it, it's just like brighter, it's kind of a little gray here. And then the uh, dark green needs a zinc free clear at cone 6, whereas cone 06 it's not going to react with any clear glaze. So here are all of the designer liner colors um, that we do have available. Again, sorry this chart is upside down, uh, it doesn't fit with my um, camera mount here the other way. So those are all the designer liner colors at cone 6. Um, when you get your package of designer liner, it'll come just like this. Um, you'll just want to open the package, and inside there's instructions and all sorts of little tips uh, on the back here that you can go ahead and read. Um, but the bottle itself um, is going to come here, and it actually comes with this awesome tip, and most importantly, this little pin here, um, which you don't want to lose. So I'll show you a little trick with not losing that there. Um, but the designer liner is going to come in here. You're going to have a little plastic covering on the tip here. So that's going to be something you're going to want to poke through or cut off um, in order for the product to come out before you put your tip on. And then once you've done that, um, you are going to do your tip. Actually, so I'm just going to straight up open this designer liner. I did not plan on it. I brought another bottle to use, but I'm just going to open this to show you guys um, how to do that. So, basically what you're going to want to do is what I like to do is I'll shake it up really good before it's all open and then just cut this tip off so that it's that it's open here and then I'll go ahead and put my detailer tip on. Again, don't lose that pen. So in order to help you not lose the pin, we like to just stick this pin through a bag um, so that you have a little flag for it. Um, I often set them down and still have a hard time finding them, but this is really, really helpful so the pin doesn't just roll off the table. It definitely does make it easier to find, but when you have a cluttered workspace, it's kind of easy to um, um, lose it in that. So we have got our pin. I'll go ahead and put this uh, tip on here and then my designer liner is ready to use so make sure in between uses you put this pin in the in the tip to avoid any clogging so if your designer liner does get clogged I will often just kind of soak the tip in some water and then use this pin to kind of dig the dried glaze out of there um, and then if you do lose these pins, you can get them at Lowe's or something like that, um, just to replace them if you um, end up not being able to find them. Um, so to go over a couple of uses of designer liner, I brought some samples to showcase here. Um, this is my favorite way of using it in the sense that it's just like obnoxiously detailed um, because the designer liner is great for doing that. This is our black designer liner with a clear glaze over it. Um, and then here I've got the designer liner with a clear and without a clear, just so you can kind of showcase it. Here is our um, fundamentals underglaze underneath it. 
Um, so you can see um, with the clear glaze, it still doesn't move. It's very, very stable. Um, it doesn't really affect the color or anything like that. And then here we have the full plate um, with clear glaze, designer liner, and under glaze again. Um, all of these samples are fired to cone 6. Again, designer liner works well at cone 06 also. Um, it's just going to work kind of like an underglaze. You'll have a nice dry finish. The colors will still be uh, pretty vibrant. Um, so you can also use it for a uh, brushing application. So here I did a video a while ago um, about designer liner and here uh, I have it with a brushing application. So this whole thing was done with designer liner at cone 6 um, and I just used one of our uh, script script liners to do these details here and then here I did some detail lining actually using our detailer brush um, so that that's definitely my favorite way to use it because it goes on so smoothly you can get some really really nice lines and you only have to go over them once for them to show up um, this piece was also fired to cone 6 you can see again there's no movement here um, if you are layering this with a glaze that does have movement, or let's say put like three really heavy coats of clear glaze on here, then I might get a little bit of hazing or a float. I don't really know what you want to call it, but it's almost just like this blue kind of blur that would happen to the line. So if you have really, really thick um, a glaze on top of it, that'll affect it. Or if you have a glaze that is mobile, that will also make this be mobile if it's um, underneath it. So definitely keep that in mind when you're using the designer liner. Sorry, it's not focusing. Okay. Um, another really nice way to use designer liner is to sign the bottom of your piece. I don't know if any of these are signed with designer liner, um, but it won't stick to your shelf um, at cone 06 or cone 6. So it's really, really nice to sign your work. I sign all of my work um, using Designer Liner just because it's really, really easy to use that way. Um, you can also use it um, for shading, as you can see in this, this guy that I showcased earlier. Um, and then also uh, with silk screens. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go over a couple different ways to use it, kind of uh, showcasing examples so you guys can see. Um, so when I first get my designer liner to go, um, I'm just going to shake it up and then I want to get this designer liner in the tip here. So I'll just kind of do like a little, I'll move these guys out of the way. Um, so I'll just do a little like practice run on the table or something like that, just so that I know that it's flowing out of my bottle and then I'm going to go ahead and apply it to my piece. So when you're using designer liner, I recommend to just do a really quick um, coat. Um, yes, that is correct. It definitely does pop off if it's too thick. It's not a dimensional product, it's a liner product. So if you're moving really slow with it like this, that is gonna be way too thick. So you do have to be kind of confident in your lines or just like, letting the glaze, the product flow out. So I'm not gonna squeeze very hard here and just have like a nice steady hand. So even if I'm going slow, I can still produce a nice thin line. Um, it's definitely really nice if you can move a little quickly, then you're gonna get a smoother line, um, as you can see there. But definitely you wanna move quick or just don't squeeze too much. This is gonna pop off if you do it like that. It's just not a product that can be applied heavily. Um, so yeah, you can do whatever. It works really well directly on the bisque um, because you're not gonna clog your tip that way. So if I put my lines, I wanna move away from the lines. I don't wanna move towards the lines because you're just shoving product up the uh, design, the detailer tip if you're going this way, as well as being considerate of if you're applying it over top of a glaze. So let's say I'm doing it over top of another glaze. I know it's not gonna move or anything. Um, I'm going to wanna make sure to have a nice light hand and pull away from the tip. And that's gonna avoid me getting this tip clogged. So that's going to 
not shove the base glaze under here and avoid the um, designer liner from going back in that tip too. So you do have to be really mindful of the way that you're using it. Um, it is really nice that it does have this like great shape for the bottle, it fits in your hands. Um, so just being kind of aware of the way that you're applying it um, is going to be really, really helpful in finding success in your results. Um, so beyond just using it for the out of the tip here, I really like to use it um, with a brush. So just putting a little bit on a plate here. And get my detailer tip back in here so it doesn't get clogged. So whenever I'm going to use it with a brush, I will condition my brush, run it through here. I didn't bring any other colors, so I'm just going to show you brush strokes in black, I guess. Um, so since this is really, really heavily pigmented, it's nice that you can go ahead and get good coverage with one or two coats. So here, you know, we'll just put a nice little weird shape there and I love using these script liners because you can create such a variety in your pattern that way again I'm gonna load my brush and just kind of do that weird thing again so it works really well for larger surfaces um, just being mindful you don't have to do three coats like you normally do um, with a lot of our products, you're, you can just go ahead and get away with one or two coats, depending on how thick it's going on. When you're doing line work, you can definitely get away with one coat. Um, I like to use our liner brush here. And in order to produce nice flowing lines, I will kind of like load a little bit of water into my product that I have on the plate here. And really fully load that brush and just kind of drag it through here. And that's a nice way to get... Um, your brush loaded so that you can make some really long lines. So here I'm just going to maybe like outline this thing here and you can see how how long that um, line lasts which is my favorite part about it. I don't have to be reloading my brush all the time. Um, it's not going to get gloppy necessarily because this product doesn't have a lot of gum in it. So I can get, like, look at how sweet these lines are. They're not even super thick or anything like that. Um, I know this isn't, like, a very cool design. I'm just kind of making lines on here. But hopefully this kind of, like, showcases the, my point as to how sweet this thing is when uh, you use it with a brush. You can just keep going because you're not gumming up your uh, the tip of your brush with gum. And you can get those beautiful fine lines. Like, we'll just kind of run this guy to the end. Like, this is crazy. So, yeah. All these lines look sweet. Um, so, yeah. We can use it in a tip. You can use it with a brush for brush work, full coverage. Line work is awesome. Um, out of the bottle, as well as using it with a brush. Um, and then I was going to do a sample of using it with a silk screen just for the sake of showcasing a silk screen sample and as well as um, just showing you that you can do it because I don't think I've done uh, silk screening on here really ever um, so I'm just gonna get a little bit more of this guy on my plate and then in order to silk screen we are going to need to use our silk screen medium. So this is going to be what thickens your the product so that we can um, push it through our silk screen. I just like to take a little bit and kind of sprinkle it on there. Kind of like do a good even dusting on the whole top. And then just, to, I like to use a palette knife. And really my advice here is just 
You want it to be pasty, but just enough so it's just barely lost a little bit of its shine. If it gets really dull or clumpy, it's too much. So like that was too much. I didn't have a very thick glob of designer liner on there. And so the cool thing about that is that we're really forgiving. Um, and we can just put a little bit more product on there and mix it in. So still a little bit thick, put a little bit more on there. I like it to still be a little bit tacky, but also pasty, <laughs> um, if that kind of makes any sense. All right, this is good. So you see how it's still shiny, but it's still a nice paste. It's not really dull and not really clumpy either. I hope, I hope you can tell. Um, kind of the difference in how this is. It's like more peanut buttery and not as as clumpy as it was. Sorry for my vague adjectives, everybody. Um, so yeah, I've got one of these mugs here that I kind of showcased yesterday. Got my little um, adventure person on there. And I'm going to use my silk screen. So my silk screen has two sides. I've got a shiny side and a not as shiny side. Um, it's a little bit textured, so you can definitely feel it if you're having a hard time um, seeing it, because they both do kind of look shiny, especially in this video. Um, you want the shiny side to be down. So this will just be a little tree on here. So I'm going to put my shiny side down. And just use, I like to use my finger for this, um, just for accuracy, kind of. So you'll just push your finger through here. Um, to do your image transfer and if you move quickly you can do multiple transfers um, in one go so I'm just going to get this guy I'll take it off and then I'll just do another one um, I like to do multiples on these so then we have a nice little uh, tree on here so I'm gonna give them a a little tree friend over here. Press this through my silk screen again. And then you can do this multiple times and you'll kind of see where it's starting to um, give up on you a little bit. And that's when you're going to want to rinse out your silk screen. So pushing that through there, getting my second tree. And then I'll go ahead and put probably one more go out of this guy and then I'll go ahead and rinse it before I add any more. So push here. I like to make sure my silk screen's outlined so I know where to stop because otherwise you're there as you can probably tell it's kind of hard to see um, these silk screens here. So I kind of go over it an extra time on my third screen just to make sure it's pushing through and then I've got my third silk screen there so I'll just go ahead and set that in some water and then I'll wash it in some cool water and I can go ahead and uh, reuse that so I really do like to use this for the silk screens because it showcases them nice and dark since it is such a highly pigmented uh, product and then otherwise I'll just Usually use this guy, sign the bottom of my piece here, get some glaze on him, and then he's good to go. Um, and that's going to be fired to cone six. But again, this product works really well at all firing ranges. So 06 up to cone 10, it's going to perform similar to an underglaze um, and not have a glossy finish or flux out onto your kiln shelf. Um, yeah, so that's uh, pretty much what I have for you. I Hopefully this was really helpful for you guys um, with troubleshooting anything. Um, your silk screens it should be available at um, any Mako distributor that's closest to you. We have all of our distributors listed on our website, and I believe that if you cannot find it from a distributor you can order it actually directly from our website and it'll kind of dispatch the order to um, the first distributor that picks it up so 
Um, check out our website to find your closest Mako distributor, as well as um, you can check out our online store as well. Um, yes, we do have distributors in the UK. Yep, they're they're all listed on our website. You can search um, based on uh, your country and region. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, so if anybody doesn't have any more questions, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. We're going to repost this to YouTube so you guys can come back and check it out. And feel free to drop any more questions that you have in the comments. I'll definitely be sure to come back and answer them. Um, I hope that I covered everything for you guys today. And uh, yeah, until next time, take care.